Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. Sometime today Osiris Rex is going to meet up with the asteroid Bennu, its target, and it'll be hanging out at Bennu for about two years. And sometime during that stay it's going to pick up a sample and then at the end of its stay it's going to bring back that sample to the Earth. So in honor of that event, uh, its arrival at least, I have decided to create a replica of Osiris-Rex uh, full of shiny tin foil. Now the shininess will take uh, textures unlimited, that's why how you get the shininess. But otherwise, I've uh, tried my best. There is one flaw and certain other things I would like to implement, but I'm not entirely sure I can. But uh, here we see the extend the solar panel also extends its little grabber thing, uh, its arm that is supposed to uh, sort of uh, suck up some material from the surface of the asteroid. And then the arm is supposed to place that material into this recovery capsule. I The shape of the recovery capsule may vary. I mean, um, I've, I've seen different pictures. I, I made it a flat version. I think it's supposed to be a little bit more stubby, but uh, a little bit more like a real capsule on a heat shield kind of thing. But that's that's a complicated little bit uh, so I mean among other things I would like I would like this to act like a ore drill uh, which we can do in Kerbal Space Program there is the possibility of drilling asteroids in Kerbal Space Program so if I could implement that on this part that would be one thing another thing I would like is just to control it like inf an infra robotics arm like hand arm or something but that's all very complicated and for now it's just attached to the solar panels like that. There are a lot of little thrusters on here, but I think it's best to just sort of see it in action. Uh, Osiris-Rex was launched on a Atlas V-411, and so let's see how that launches. But first we begin with the major flaw that I've had with this model, and that's that once I get out to the launch pad, its engine ignites all the time. Now this befuddles me because Aside from the solar panels, there's nothing different about this model, uh, you know, in terms of modules, than my tugs that I presented in a previous video. My tugs have the RCS ports, the engine, um, the shininess, you know, all, all that business is consistent with this one. The only thing that this has that the tugs do not are the deployable solar panels. So why? it should have this problem where the engine starts on the launch pad I have no idea fortunately of course it doesn't actually take any fuel because the that we have the fuel pump enabled so I can just right click on here and shut it down but it is very inconvenient and annoying so if anybody has any idea what conflict could be occurring there that would be great but uh, yep yeah, I'll actually throw all down and we'll use KOS during the launch and of course the reason I like the Atlas V411 is because it has the single booster on the side um, which, which is always interesting to me. In Realism Overhaul, which is where we are right now, having one booster strapped to the side is no problem because it's just like real life. Um, as far as stock Kerbal Space Program though, you might have a little bit more trouble because there isn't as much gimbal on the engines in stock, and most importantly, stock aerodynamics is absolutely horrible during, when you're transonic, when you're approaching the speed of sound and just past it. It, it, it there's a lot of drag, and that's why a lot of stock craft, a lot of stock launchers have to have fins on them, because not only do they not have enough gimbal on the main engine, they also face a lot more drag than a real rocket does during the transonic region. So those are two big problems if you're trying to duplicate uh, Atlas V-411 in stock. Speaking of stock, the OSIRIS-REx model that I'll be linking in the video description uh, with that one little flaw, unfortunately, unless I get some feedback on that, uh, that will be sized the same in stock as it is in Realism Overhaul, I guess to give you guys an extra challenge. Um, if you use a 2.5 meters upper stage, it should be fine. It is, I mean, it's pretty big uh, the way you look at it. So, 
it's also possible. I mean, if, if you take a look at the fairing, um, two, uh, it's about two point. Uh, let's say you make a two point five meter fairing, you could probably use a one point eight seven five meter upper stage, and then a two point five meter main stage. That could probably work out. It'll probably fit. Um, I'd have to see. I haven't. I haven't really checked that. Of course, it's possible to just go into the configuration and rescale it if you need to. There goes the booster. Now I don't have an asteroid here to encounter, unfortunately, and certainly not Bennu. So Osiris Rex has a significant amount of fuel inside of it. So if we take a look at Mechjeb, it's got 2,123 meters per second of delta V, and that's based on it using hydrazine. I have no idea whether it's supposed to be using hydrazine or not. All I know is how what the mass of the fuel is. And so I went with the mass of the fuel, and if it's using hydrazine, then it's 2,123. That seems like the most likely scenario, because they probably want to use a mod propellant. But they could be using a bi-propellant like MMHN and 204 and get better delta V. So either of those is a possibility. And I might have to reconfigure this if it turns out that it's a different propellant. But remember, Osiris Rex's job is to it's going to be sent on a trajectory to meet up with the asteroid using the centaur stage here. And then once it gets there, it has to sort of match orbits. But the asteroid is a near-Earth asteroid, so it's not in a very different orbit from the Earth. So it's not going to spend too much trying to rendezvous with it. But then it's got to pick up its sample, and then it has to come back home. It has to make a trajectory back to Earth, and a safe one so that its little sample return capsule can enter Earth's atmosphere without any trouble. And of course, probably uh, Osiris-Rex will dispose itself in Earth's atmosphere, I'm not sure. Okay, we have separation of the first stage. Ignition of the second stage. And I'll manually separate the fairing. So this is what it looks like out here. I've had interesting issues with the sample return capsule. I did leave room for ore. It's supposed to get 2 kilograms, and that 0.2 ore amounts to 2 kilograms of ore, so it has it later, as you can see. Things seem to be in the wrong order, leading us to not know the delta V. There we go. So, basically, when we reach orbit, we'll have more than 4,000 meters per second of delta V, and so the centaur stage can easily. Um, transfer this to even Mars if it wanted to, but a near-Earth asteroid should be very easy. The mass of Osiris-Rex is like about 2.1 tons. The dry mass is only 840, uh, sorry, 880 tons. It's uh, 840 without the recovery capsule. So this is only two parts. There's the body and then the recovery capsule. And given the problem with the engine lighting right on the launch pad when we bring it out, maybe I should have made it in more parts because potentially I've overloaded it with modules with the solar panels, the RCS, the main engine. At least I didn't put a decoupler on it. The only decoupler is on the recovery capsule itself. So, rather than bring it to an asteroid right now, what I'm going to do is we're going to bring it on a... We're going to bring it back into the atmosphere directly and see how the recovery capsule does. Okay. So, that is that. And let's see. I don't want to decouple that one. I just want to decouple this. Oh, no, I didn't want to relight. There we go. Okay, so let's deploy. So, extend solar panel. We had to shut down the engine manually, so let's activate the engine manually. And that's that. So, first of all, hmm, it should be, oh, it is, uh, I, I need to test whether it's getting um, sunlight or not. Okay, it's using hydrazine, that's nominal. If we point away from the sun, it should it should consume electric charge. That's what I wanted to see. So it's consuming electric charge. Let's see if electric. So this is away from the sun, right? 
I want to make sure that the solar panels have directionality and they're only getting sunlight from this side. So, uh, okay, yeah, uh, the numbers went wild because I've got certain other mods involved, but it is ticking down, so that's nominal. All right, uh, let's go retrograde right now. There are a lot of little thrusters on here. You can even do a little bit of translation. It's got, um, there's two little translation thrusters, one here and one, one there. All for rendezvousing with an asteroid. In stock, this will have a reaction wheel on it. Uh, in realism overhaul, it does not. If you're using it in stock, do remove the RO configuration, otherwise it's going to interfere with things. If you're not using textures unlimited, then you're going to, there's another configuration in the folder that I will link in the video description. That is a TU file, that is the textures unlimited configuration. So uh, you may want to remove that if you're not using textures unlimited, but why wouldn't you? <laughs> why? Uh, given the nice little shiny foil texture we've got here, if you're not using Textures Unlimited, you have to ask yourself why. Okay, so we are pointed retrograde, and I think we're clear of the Centaur, so let's ignite the main engine. Verify that that's working properly. Well, that's certainly going to be good enough. Let's wait until we're closer to the atmosphere before releasing the recovery capsule. I haven't put anything on it in terms of communication or com uh, control or parachute. I don't even know how to do parachutes. So you might want to add a parachute part to it. I'm just going to test the re-entry situation. So now we're going to point prograde. Unfortunately it's going to be at night time. Okay, so decouple. I think it's decoupled because the decoupler thing went off and the ore is not showing up. So let's let it drift off. Okay, well, fine. Switch. Okay, we are on this. Maybe I should have had more decoupler force, huh? Or maybe its center mass is not where it ought to be. That's another issue. I've added a COM offset, but I don't know if I fine-tuned it right. We'll take a look. So I'm I'm assuming it needs to be prograde because this is what I envision as the heat shield side. I don't the way it really looks is it's got a it might have a white heat shield, I'm not sure. In any case, I'm, I, I feel like it's probably heat shielded all around, <laughs> just, just to make sure that they get the sample back. Okay, let's change camera view. It seems to be doing more or less what we expect it to. There's no reaction wheel or anything on here, no control whatsoever. If you feel like I should change that, I don't know. I don't know what they have in this recovery capsule. It seems like a pretty simple thing, 46 kilograms carrying 2 kilograms of material. So I don't know what it's supposed to have. It's not ablating much. I might want to decrease its temperature, max temperature, so that it ablates a little bit more. If we got a carry deablator, we might as well use it. All these considerations. It's trying to ablate. You can see it's trying to produce charred ablator and it's ablating, but of course it's got a very low heat shield loading right now, so. Yeah, I should probably reduce the Max temp. Though at these G forces, I'm surprised we're not at least getting some sort of flame effects. Well, it's jostling like it has some aerodynamic forces against it. 
And again, with the low heat shield loading, it should sort of drift about like a feather kind of thing. Maybe it'll even survive hitting the ground. I don't know what kind of uh, impact tolerance I gave it, actually. I probably, because it's essentially a decoupler right now with a blader on it, I probably copied the data from either a heat shield or a decoupler. Not normally the parts that you consider to be impact sensitive. I mean, at least they, they often seem to survive if they're not crashing the ground at really high velocity. Whoa, why did it have that spike? Do you see that? I, I saw a G4 spike and I have no idea. Oh, it's going faster into the ground now? That's weird. Hmm. It was like a spike, like it deployed a parachute, but it didn't deploy a parachute. I think it's got some sort of aerodynamic effect going. Hmm. Well, it's flipping around a point in here, so that's at least good. The center of mass isn't outside the body, but I think its center of mass could be nudged a little bit closer to the heat shield side, and maybe it won't be flipping around like that. Maybe then it'll just stay steady. On the other hand, it flipping around sort of seems like a good idea. It's bleeding off some speed. We're still at very high altitude, too. It's coming down like it's in on Venus or something. It's taking forever to get to the ground. Now, if you don't want to use this recovery capsule, you can put any recovery capsule you want on the OSIRIS-REx. It's just got a node on the top, and it'll take anything that you want to use as a recovery capsule. So there is flexibility in what you want it to carry. Um, and of course, if you expect OSIRIS-REx to carry a heavier load, then you might want to well, consider the Delta V loss in that situation. It, you could put uh, one of the stock ISRU drills on OSIRIS-REx. It's, uh, it's got room for that. Uh, you could put it uh, in roughly the same place as the existing arm and use the ISRU drill to actually drill the ore and uh, the ore will automatically be placed in a containment unit if you use this or some other containment unit. So there are options. This is just one option. The interesting thing about this option right now is that it's at a low enough velocity that it really could survive impact potentially. So I'm just waiting to see. I still don't know how, don't, know how to do solar panel rotation so that it tracks the sun. So OSIRIS-REx's solar panels here um, won't automatically track the sun. Okay, here we go. Final descent. It looks like we're over water, so it will be a splashdown. And will it survive impact? Yes. Yes, it will survive impact. So no parachute necessary, I guess. All right, so, and I, I believe our OSIRIS-REx must have bit the dust by now because it was descending into the atmosphere. Uh, I think that's the centaur stage up there because it's still in a full orbit. Yep, so the rest of OSIRIS-REx will have bit the dust and this is all that is left, but this is the science part. I should have added some sort of like science points for bringing this back or something. But anyway, that's all for later. On this note, I hope you enjoyed the model I link in the video description and that you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.